recording. All right. Hi, I'm George. I'm here to talk to you about projectile motion, which is basically the motion of an object under the influence of gravity. Now, to understand projectile motion, you have to first understand the concept of vectors. So let's just give an example here. So there is this something moving at a velocity of x. And then the, the velocity x can be broken down into its horizontal and then its vertical components. So this is x horizontal, and then x vertical. And this is the angle above the horizontal line, which is called theta. So I'll give a little example here. So let's say that there's something being shot out of a cannon, a uh, cannonball being shot out of a cannon. Um, so I'll draw a cannon. better. Alright, that's good. And there's the cannonball. And the cannonball is moving at, let's say, 10 meters per second. Alright. This is a line parallel to the ground. And this is line representing the initial direction and velocity of the cannonball. So this can be broken down into its horizontal and then vertical components. And this is theta. This is x. So this can be modeled. And, uh, the initial velocity can be modeled by this. So this is 10. Let's say that theta is 30 degrees. Alright. So the horizontal component to the velocity um, is um, 10 cosine 30. And the vertical is 10 sine. 30. Now, sine of 30 works out really well because it's actually one half. So 10 times one half is equal to 5 meters per second. And that's 5 meters per second upwards. Now, cosine isn't quite as good. Um, it doesn't come out to be quite as nice, but it comes out to be root 3 over 2. 10 times root 3 over 2, which can be simplified to 5 root 3 meters per second. And that is this way. Now in physics, there's this uh, idea that this way, vertical, upwards, is positive. So we'll continue with that idea. Uh, so, in order to, let's say that we wanted to uh, find the time that this is in the air, then we can use the equation right here. Well, final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Now, the acceleration here will be solely due to gravity, and it will be um, affecting only the vertical component of the uh, velocity. Um, it won't have any effect on the horizontal uh, component. The only effect, only factor that would affect the horizontal component would be uh, air resistance. But in this problem, let's just assume that air resistance is negligible. So um, final velocity, or uh, initial velocity, will be the horizontal, or the vertical, right here. So it's 5. And the final velocity will be this exact thing, except in the downward direction, which according to this right here, means that it would have to be negative, so it would be negative 5. And then gravity is uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, but it's also downwards, so that is another negative. And then time is what we're solving for. So if we subtract 5 over, we get negative 10, which is equal to negative 9.8 t divided by negative 9.8, and then t is equal to um, 
believe this is 1.02 seconds. So that's how long the ball was in the air for. Now, if we wanted to solve for how far the ball went horizontally, then we need to um, use this in this equation. Now we know that velocity is equal to distance over time, and that's distance horizontal. And this is um, velocity horizontal. So that means that distance, or I don't know if I'm it's the, you know, distance horizontal is equal to velocity horizontal times time. Now time will be the same for both the horizontal and vertical uh, components of the uh, velocity because it's one ball, so it's going to have one time for the entire weight despite the fact that we broke up the vectors. Um, so the distance will be the, uh, the horizontal velocity of 5 root 3 times the time of 1.02, which is equal to, you can give me one second, 8.84 meters. So that's great. So now we know how far this can can shoot um, at this angle. Um, this can be useful for other um, other other areas. Um, trying to figure out how far you can throw a baseball, uh, how long it takes for something to fall. You can actually judge height by this um, by how long it takes for something to fall. Um, there are other methods of of solving. This one is called kinematics, but um, energy can also be used. The potential energy, kinetic energy, but in order to solve for this, um, the distance, you actually have to know the mass of the ball. And with the limited information I gave over here, in the original problem, or actually, this is included as well. Energy can't be used, and this is the method that needs to be used. Um, so. This is great, and I hope that you all learned something new. And signing off. Thank you.